Good morning and welcome to Rogation Sunday here at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. What is Rogation? Rogation Day offers us an opportunity to reflect on the significance of water, seeds, and soil, and the peoples whose livelihoods depend on these elements, which is all of us. This is a time to remember our connectedness to the soil, to the seeds that are planted, and the connectedness to those that tend to the soil. Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Joined to the Christ in the waters of baptism, we raised him with him new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your own image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parch, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through the water, for the water is in this font and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in this forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We will sing, We Plow the Fields of Scattered, on page 680 of your hymnals, and we will sing verse 1 and 3. Christ, the creator love of God, and the communion of sanctifying Holy Spirit, be with you all. And also with you. Let us turn to the west, the place of thunderstorms and darkness, that we may face our fears in the darkness and suffering and return to God, to the land that God has promised us. We ask your blessing on the darkness and suffering in our lives, that there we may find strength and growth and the light of the world. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will sing verse 1 of As Rain from the Clouds. Amen. 
favorable weather, temperament rains and fruitful seasons, and that there may be food and drink for all your creatures. Let us pray to our God. God, hear our prayer. For your blessing upon the lands and waters, and all who work upon them to bring forth food, and all things needful for your people, let us pray to our God. God, hear our prayer. For all who care for the earth, the water, and the air, that the riches of your creation may abound from age to age, let us pray to our God. God, hear our prayer. Let us turn to the north, the place of cold winds and waiting, that we may learn to wait with hope and eager longing for the redemption of freedom of all creation. We ask your blessing on this town of Atwater, where the love of Christ has taken root in many places, and particularly on this and our congregation, Bethlehem Lutheran Church. In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all, all powers of the Lord, O heavens and all waters above the heavens, sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall dew, all winds and fire and heat, winter and summer, Glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord, O chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow, frost and cold, ice and sleet. Glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord, O nights and days, O shining light and unfolding dark, storm clouds and thunderbolts. Glorify the Lord. Let us turn to the east. The place of the rising sun and beginning again in the resurrection, certainty that God sends God's Spirit to renew our lives and the face of the earth. We ask your blessing on all that we are this day, the brokenness of our lives and the blessings, and on this, your good earth and all creation, that we may live together in harmony in the name of the triune God. Amen. Amen. We will sing verse 2 of God's rain from the clouds. Found on page 508 of your hymnal. and hills and all that grows upon the earth, or springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in waters, all birds of the air, glorify the Lord. O beasts of the wild and all you flocks and herds, O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord. Let us turn to the south, the place of warm wind that is growing is a growing place asking that our lives and all creation may grow in love and be fruitful. We ask your blessing as we walk into the future, that we may be united in your love with all creation, and that we ourselves be fertile soil, producing abundant growth, rich in fruits of the Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
We will sing the last verse of As Rain from the Clouds again on page 508 of your hymnal. God glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of your Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous. You are holy and humble of heart. Glorify the Lord. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the firmament of his power. Glorify the Lord. Our prayer of the day. O creating God, you have made our world that all that is in it. We give you thanks for your glories that you have presented to us as stewards of this earth. We ask for your guidance as we enter a new season of growing, that we may work the land carefully and with the love of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will be singing our first reading of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. to sow, 
a time to love and a time to hate, a time for peace, I swear, it is not too late. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food, and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our second reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 9. What then is Apollos, what is Paul, servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. Our gospel of affirmation is a song, God, whose farm is all creation. We'll sing verses 1 through 3 on page 734. Days from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 18 through 23. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. And for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of the wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case a hundredfold, in another sixty and in another 30. 
fired up. John? Good morning. Good morning, it is, John. Uh, hey, uh, it is a hot day, and us farmers, we get hot. So I'm going to get down to one more layer. I still have a t-shirt on after this. But. And then to feel really comfortable, my girls and my kids will know I got to have a hat. And so I have a hat and I have my shades. And now I think I have a unique message. One thing I've always appreciated about God is he always has said in the Bible, one of my favorite verses, and I think this goes in a great time to say it is, come unto me, ye who labor. And uh, I think a lot of people are feeling that way right now as they'd like to labor and get to work. All right. I have a short uh, message today. The story is told of an explorer who some years ago had just returned to his country from the Amazon. The people at home were eager to learn all about the vast and mighty river and the country surrounding it. But how, he wondered, could he ever describe it to them? How could he ever put it into words, the feelings that flooded into his heart when he saw the exotic flowers and heard the night sounds of the jungle? How could he communicate to them the smells that filled the air and the sense of danger and excitement that would come whenever he and his fellow explorers encountered strange animals or paddled through treacherous rapids? So the explorer did what all good explorers do. He said to the people, go and find out for yourselves what it is like. And to help them, he drew up a map of the river, pointing out the various features of its course and describing some of the dangers and some of the routes that could be used to avoid those dangers. The people took the map and they framed it and hung it on the wall of the local science museum so that everyone could look at it. Some made copies of it. After a period of time, many of those who made the copies for themselves considered themselves experts on the river. And indeed, they knew its every turn and bend. They knew how broad it was and how deep, where the rapids and the falls were. They knew the river, and they instructed the others in what it was like whenever those people indicated an interest in it. I think that many people today are the same situation. They know the scriptures, but they do not understand them. They do not understand them because they are passive concerning the word of God. They fail to link their experiences to it and allow the experiences and the prophecies in it to link themselves to it. They haven't entered into the wholeness of the mes message. Rather, some parts they have accepted and other parts they have rejected or ignored without ever considering the connections between the parts. Indeed, a lot of us, like the disciples before Easter Sunday, we shrink away from much of what Jesus says. We don't want to hear about carrying the burdens of others. We don't want to hear about suffering for love. We don't want to hear about giving up family and home for the sake of the gospel. Nor do we want to hear about how good people, people like Jesus, have to die before they can become fully alive. This material from the scripture is not good news to us, just as it was not good news to the disciples. We cannot see how or why it might be important for us, rather for us as for the disciples. Good news, welcome news, consists of hearing about the glory to be given the faithful, of hearing how the righteous will be given power, how the humble will be given the earth, and how poor in the spirit the kingdom of heaven. For my friends, without one, there cannot be the other. I have a little game that I'd like to play this morning. Actually, I'm not there yet. I have more. We can't have the earth unless we carry the burdens of others. We can't have the kingdom of heaven without the willingness to put God before our own desires, our own families. We can't have power without the willingness to suffer. And we can't have glory without the willingness to die. Until we understand that, until our minds are open to see the links between what are now and what we will be later, until we, link, till we see the links between death 
and resurrection, the scriptures are a closed book. This is why Jesus did not open the minds of the disciples so that they could understand the scriptures before his resurrection. Until Jesus rose, the disciples did not have the experience they needed to have open minds until he rose. The link between death and resurrection existed in their minds only as an unpleasant idea. It certainly was not there as a glorious reality. Friends, Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is the link between our experience and the message of the scriptures. He is the link that can open our minds so that we might understand the scriptures, and indeed so that we might understand our own lives and the message and love for he has for us. Today, I want to play a little game with all you listeners, and I'm going to give you some clues, and I want you to find some things that are here in the church or possibly at your homes. I'll pile them up here and and when Jason or the other guys, Darren and Richard and Gina and Madison, bring them up to me, uh, we'll see how good of the scavengers they are. Okay, the first item, listen now. I want you to all find me something that has a lot of songs about God's love in it. Any ideas? It's got to be a hymnal. Richard's got that for me. Thank you, Richard. The next item... I want you to find something that tells people what goes on in the church and that almost everyone here today reads. And many people put on their refrigerator, in their Bibles, after church is over. I think I got it, John. I think I have it. Jason thinks he has it. And I think he might be ready. I have a bulletin. Thank you, Jason. The next item. I want you to find something that tells all kinds of stories about how God loves us. Any idea? I think I found it, John. Jake, Darren's got this one. Got a Bible for you. I bet it is. God's love. Now I want you to find something that is made by God that is very, very beautiful. I think I got it. Thank you, Gina. And they are beautiful, Gina. Thank you. Now I want you to find something that holds the gifts that God has given to us. Madison found this one, and that is correct, the offering plate. It's what we offer. Now, here's the toughest one. I want you to find something that is all of the above. It must be something that is full of songs about God. It must tell stories about God's love and about what the church is doing. And it must be beautiful and holds all kinds of gifts that God has given and finally, it must be able to be found by pe people who never come to church and never see hymn books and Bibles and bulletins or any of the other things we have up front here. Can you find it? It's us as believers. As believers. That's right. A person who believes in Christ is full of stories and songs about God. A person who believes, in, believes is beautiful and is full of the gifts that God has given them. And often is the only thing that a person who never comes to church can find that can tell them and show them the wonderful things of God's love for us and them. God wants each one of us to tell others about Jesus and his love and to give his gifts to them so that they may have a better life and be able to live in peace. God bless and continue to live God's love. Uh, we're going to sing the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, 1, 2, and 3.
Let us affirm our faith today by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and our life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now we'll have the blessing. Blessing of the water. Creator God, fountain of life, we praise you for the gift of water. For lakes and rivers, wetlands and rain, oceans and aquifers, for water we use daily for washing and drinking, for water that gives life to crops, flowers, and gardens. Through water we are drenched and promised, liberated from sin and death, fear and oppression, and we are joined to the life and death of Jesus Christ in baptism. Just as your spirit moved over the waters in the beginning of creation, move over our waters now. Move, our, move over Tad and Summit Lake. Move over Diamond Lake. Move over Nelson Lake and Sapphire Lake. Move over Lake Elizabeth. Move over Casota Lake. Move over the springs, prairie potholes, sloughs, and wetlands. Move over all the Middle Fork Crow Watershed District. Move over to love these waters as you do. Fill us with the vision of a renewed creation, and give us the will to be faithful stewards of our watersheds. Amen. Blessing of the Earth Loving Creator of God, we acknowledge that you, as the only source of growth and abundance, you provide us with food for body and spirit. With your help, we plant our crops, and by your power, they produce our harvest. In your kindness and love, make our work fruitful. Bless our fields and the crops we plant. Let them yield a rich harvest. Grant favorable weather to make these fields productive. Guide the work of our hands, for in you we live and move and have our being. Help us bring you glory by using well and sharing the good things we receive from you through the land on which we work. We ask this through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Blessing of the Seed God, source of all life, who did hide your seeds in all that lives? Be present here as we greet these tiny seeds with their gifts of life. Seeds of life, so small and yet, in the mystery of death and burial, you will produce like tenfold and more. We sprinkle you with water, sacred sign of life, asking that you may be embraced by our mother of the earth, fed by rain and kissed gently by the sun. In caring for you, we shall experience the most ancient prof profession of the human family, the primal vocation of being workers in the garden. Soon we will be our pride and joy. Soon we will be our food as we give up your life that we may live. Seeds of pregnant with life, teach us the Easter secret of life, as we ask God to bless you. Amen. Blessing of the hands that work the land. When God brought order out of the chaos in creation, God created a garden full of every plant and animal, a garden beautiful and good. Through your practice, you become attuned with the cycle of God's time. You connect with the seasons, the seasons of planting and the seasons of plucking, the seasons for sowing and the season for, re for reaping. Let us pray. We ask God's blessing be upon you through this and every growing season. We ask that your vocation continue to be life-giving we thank God that you are able to co-create, planting that God might grow. May you always know that your talents and passions come from God, who has created you and called you good. Amen. Blessing of the community. Let us give thanks for the recreation of the beloved community, bound together by ties of love in every countryside. 
in which all people shall, search, shall share joy in sowing the seed and reaping the harvest of the kingdom of God. We yeah, give thanks, thanks, O God. Lord. For those who drive and those who dispatch, for those who make contracts, for those who repair and those who provide nourishment and support. We give thanks, O God. For the Christ of the country road, who walked and served in the pleasant land of Galilee, and who today walks the country roads of the world in comradeship with all who harvest the fields. We give thanks, O God. For widening horizons of rural life, the open doors in which entering we may serve the rural peoples of the world and walk the byways with Christ. We give thanks to God. Prayer for safety. Let us pray for the safety of those who will be operating this equipment in the coming days. As they spend, spend long hours behind the wheel, Lord, keep them in your mercy. As they make repairs in the field, Lord, keep them in your mercy. As they place their focus on the task at hand, Lord, keep them in your mercy. As they work deep into the night, Lord, keep them in your mercy. Lord, be with those who go out to plant. Keep them safe in this hectic time. Give them strength. Let them know always that they are in your company and receive the good gifts you have promised of grace, freedom, and love. Amen. Amen. Blessing of the Equipment Brothers and sisters in Christ, Today we seek God's blessing as we gather with thankfulness for his wondrous creation. We especially seek God's blessing at this time of harvest, and so we have brought with us signs of this season. We dedicate our equipment, our grain, our time, and ourselves to the glory of God. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You make the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth, of things seen and unseen. You stretch out the heavens like a curtain. You divided the day from night. You appointed times and seasons for work and rest, for tearing down and for building up. Be with us now and bless the work of those who labor in the fields. Grant us faith to know your gracious purpose in all things and continue your blessings to us through the bounty of your creation. Amen. Let us pray to the God who has created us and all that exists in this world. We pray for those people in the world who go hungry every day, for the children who have not known the taste of bread. We pray for those people in our community who do not have enough to eat, for the ones who are not able to eat nutritionally balanced meals. We pray for the governments around the world that they make good decisions, wise decisions, regarding food for their people. We pray for the ones who have begun to till, plant, and care for the land so that there will be enough for us to eat. God. You call us to exercise good stewardship over the land. You call us to care for the land with love and compassion. Help us to answer your call. Help us to tend the land in ways that will make it last, to grow crops that do not damage the land, to engage in sustainable agriculture. Giver of good gifts, we give you thanks that we are able to come before you with our petitions. <clears throat> We ask for your good favor and response for each of these in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name come on, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, I have is thank you for joining in with us today. And now I'll receive the benediction.
May the God who has ordered creation order our days as loving stewards. May God's richest and most bountiful blessings be upon us as we go out these doors to walk in the fields at this Rogation tide. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn will be for the fruit of all creation, verses 1 and 3 of 679. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a great day.